was a place where mercy reigns and never dies. There's a place where streams of grace flow deep and wide, where all the love. I've ever found comes like a flood, comes flowing down. At the cross, at the cross, I surrender my life. I'm in all of you. I'm in. Sin washed away. I owe all to you. I owe all to you, Jesus. There's a place where sin and shame. God of creation, there at the start, before the beginning of time. With no point of reference, He spoke to the dark and fleshed out the wonder of life. And as you speak, a hundred billion galaxies are born, and the vapor of your breath a planet on. If the stars were made to worship.
lips, oh, well, I I can see your heart and everything you've made Every burning star, a signal fire of gray If creation sings your praises, so will I of your promise You don't speak in vain No syllable empty your voice For once you have spoken On nature and science Follow the sound of your voice And as you speak So will I If the mountains bow in reverence So will I If the oceans roar your greatness So will I For if everything exists to lift you high Amount to your desire 
You're the one who never leaves the one behind. Hi there, good morning. Welcome to the morning service from Bamwell Baptist Church. We've managed to secure the services of Stephen Burr this morning and he'll be bringing us a message. In fact, the whole recording is being conducted at the headquarters of Burr Baxter. Uh, when I say headquarters, it's a modest factory in Cheadle, but it does give us an opportunity and should make us think that how grateful we are that we can share our Christianity and worship freely in this country when we see what's going on in the world in so many places. And so without further ado, let's have our first song. Thank you. Great is thy faithfulness, O God my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not. As thou hast been 
Good morning. The missions group have suggested that I might take some time to uh, speak about the needs of our local hospital, Stepping Hill. The first thing to pray for is the staff. Staff who are weary after 12 months of very hard work, very demanding work, very emotionally demanding work. Many of the staff are not just physically weary, but have their own tale to tell of loss and illness, not only of friends and family, but also of the patients that they've been dealing with. So pray for the staff, particularly the chaplaincy staff. The chaplains have not been allowed to do their normal work of visiting on the wards. The volunteers who give such wonderful support to the chaplaincy have not been allowed to work in the hospital. We have one chaplain on long-term sick for the last six months and another chaplain is retiring at the end of this month. So it's left those remaining chaplains struggling to cover all of the slots for on call for instance. They have in fact taken an opportunity while the lockdown has been on to raise the profile of the chaplaincy in a number of different ways. They've responded to individuals, patients and family requesting a visit. They've taken some time over the last uh, period of Lent each day to have um, a thought for the day and a suggested response which has been posted on the hospital intranet and in the staff Facebook page. They've also arranged for a short Good Friday service and a short Easter Sunday service to be put on the same media so that all in the hospital can share something of Easter. You could pr pray particularly for Tuesday, which is the anniversary of our first lockdown. The chapel will be open all day, prayer cards available, chaplains there to talk if necessary. But also we're trying to put some prayer cards Make them available in the canteen so that people can express their loss, their feeling of grief, their longing for normality. In all these ways, Stepping Hill needs your prayers. The chaplaincy particularly needs your prayers. So not just today, but through the next weeks and months, just remember to pray for Stepping Hill. Thank you.
self-obsession. I've been the worst, believed the curse, searched for worth, and found nothing in heaven, on earth, or in between. No man-made schemes or pure righteous plea could free me from myself. But I remember the day when I came colliding with the cross. I saw Jesus stumble to Golgotha on that pathway filled with pain, slain on blood-stained tree. The power of his death has invited me into my own resurrection as overthrown. The graves claims it is finished is the good news in every age echoing on the airways jesus christ was crucified that the worst of us might taste life
If you're watching this video, chances are you've got questions about the Bible. Questions like, what is it, what is it all about, or who wrote it, and how is it relevant to my life? For now, let's look at how to read the Bible. The Bible itself is a collection of books that arose out of the history of ancient Israel and is broken up into two sections called the Old and New Testaments. It's made of the Torah, historical narratives, wisdom literature, and the Psalms, to name a few. Now, there are a lot of ways we can approach reading the Bible. For starters, maybe you've got questions about the meaning of life and how we got here. If so, I'd encourage you to look at the first chapters of Genesis, which explains the story of creation and the beginnings of humanity. Or perhaps you've learned some of the more famous Bible stories, the parting of the Red Sea, Daniel in the lion's den, Jonah and the whale, David and Goliath, they're all in there. But if you've never read the Bible before, I would like to encourage you to consider starting in the Gospel of John, because ultimately, the story of the Bible points to one single individual, one in whom the character of God is revealed, someone who healed the sick, gave sight to the blind, and raised the dead to life and in the end was crucified for our sins that you and I could have eternal life. That person was Jesus. It's his story that reveals God's love for us expressed throughout the Bible. The Gospel of John states, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, and whoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. By stepping into a relationship with Him, you will begin to experience the peace, meaning, and purpose of life that's only found in the person and work of Jesus. And today, He's extending that invitation to you. All you have to do is receive it. If you have any more questions about the Bible, how to read it, or how to step into this relationship with Jesus, I encourage you to click to connect and we'll put you in touch with someone who would love to talk with you. And as you begin your journey of engaging with the Bible, don't worry, it's a big book, but Jesus is waiting to teach you all about it.
cross Jesus is waiting God so loved the world Well, good morning and thank you for joining us this morning. I've just got a very, very short talk to give you this morning, so don't rush out and put on the coffee in anticipation of the service ending because I'm just not going to be that long and you might miss this short talk. Um, I'm reminded of what... Um, Someone said to my brother-in-law after he preached, he said, oh, when you go on a bit um, and it get a bit more mature, you'll find that you're expanded in your thoughts, which was nice English way of saying that um, that was a bit thin gruel. And sometimes I'm reminded um, of that, um, that we're not all preachers, but um, in these times while we're waiting for a minister, um, we um, all chip in as we can. And so to begin this morning, I'd just like to read from Mark 8. Mike preached to us that last week, but there's a passage within there that I'd like to preach from this morning. Mark 8 and verse 27. And Jesus and his disciples went to, on to the villages around Caesarea Philippi. And on the way he asked them, Who do people say I am? And they replied, Some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others one of the prophets. But what about you, he asked. Who do you say I am? And Peter answered, You are the Messiah. And so I'd like to ask you the same question. Who do you say that Jesus is? It's a question uh, that's been asked many, many times. People have preached on this many times, but in simplicity, I just want to ask you again this morning, who do you say that Jesus is? Maybe if you're watching this on your own, say it out loud. Who do I think that Jesus is, was, is? If you're watching with somebody else, maybe turn to them and ask them, who do you think that Jesus is? Because it's a profound and interesting question as to who Jesus is and who you think he is. There's many people in the world that have done many great things there's many people that have done many terrible things. But the name of Jesus is spoken every day by millions of people. If I go down onto to the shop floor, if I go onto a factory shop floor, if I go into a coffee, if I go into a restaurant, if I go on the bus, if I go on the train, if I walk along the streets, I hear people using the word and the name Jesus, mainly, almost all the time, as a swear word, as a blasphemy, as a curse, as an exasperation. How many other names down through the ages have, have that resonance? Julius Caesar, does anyone curse in the name of Julius Caesar? Does anyone curse in the name of Tony Blair? Maybe some people, Theresa May, maybe some people, but really, in truth, does anyone, does anyone curse in the name of the Queen? Presidents, Gaddafi, come and gone. Does anyone curse in his name? Maybe some people in the Middle East. The name of Jesus is across the world, is known every day. Every day people are using that name. If I go into the playgrounds, people know a lot of names, but they're almost certainly know in the schools the name of Jesus. They won't necessarily know who he is, they won't necessarily say what he said or what he did, 
but they know his name. The question is for you is, who do you say that Jesus is? C.S. Lewis said something that had been said by many, many preachers, many theologians before in different ways, but it had a pr profound resonance when he said it, and I'll repeat it, and you probably, some of you, even know it, but I'll read it to you. I'm trying here to prevent anyone saying that really foolish thing that people often say about him as Jesus. I'm ready to accept Jesus as a great moral teacher, but I don't accept his claim to be God. That is the one thing we must not say. A man who was merely a man and said the sort of things Jesus said would not be a great moral teacher. He would either be a lunatic on the level with a man who says he's a poached egg, or else he would be the devil of hell. You must make your choice. Either this man was and is the son of God, or else a madman or something worse. You can shut him up for a fool, you can spit at him, kill him as a demon, or you can fall at his feet and call him Lord and God. But let us not come with any patronising nonsense about his being a great human teacher. Now it seems to me obvious that he was neither a lunatic nor a fiend, and consequently, however strange or terrifying or unlikely it may seem, I have to accept the view that he was and is God. So I'll ask you again the question, who do you say that Jesus is? We can come to church, we can watch online videos, we can sing the songs, we can even sometimes talk or pray, but not really have any idea who Jesus is or what we're, what we're doing. God didn't send his son to condemn the world. He didn't come into the world to condemn you. Jesus doesn't stand around waiting for a committee for the right time, the right words to say, health and safety to say, is this the right time to save you? Even in those times, they said, who is this that forgives sins? I am the way, the truth, and the life, Jesus says. No one comes to the Father except by me. You can know Jesus now if you believe on him, accept him, and confess your sins, and accept him as your saviour. Let's just pray together. Lord, this morning we just like to, to thank you that you are, you are living. You can be known by everyone that comes to you. Lord, pray this morning that if anybody who's listening to and watching this service this morning doesn't know you, that they will turn to you right now and ask you into their lives and accept you as Lord. Lord Jesus, we give thanks that you have the power to do this right now. And we give thanks in your name, Lord Jesus. Amen. Rock of ages, work for me. Let me hide myself in thee. Let the water and the blood from thy riven side which flow be a sin, the double cure. Save me from.
Thank you.